morning. My name is LaShonda, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the CA Software Change Management Global Users Community Webcast. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you, Mr. Neil Thomas. You may begin your conference. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from today. Uh, welcome to the second uh, quarter CA Software Change Manager Global User Community. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining today. Uh, looks like we have about 30, 35 people online uh, for the call. Um, today we are going to be introducing Rose Thakech, um, the new CA SEM uh, product manager, and she's going to be providing a product roadmap update. Um, part of this update is going to include some of the high-level features of the 12.5 release um, that's going to be coming out. Um, I'll let Rose touch on uh, one that may be available in terms of a high-level time frame. Um, some of those, some of the two high-level features that we're going to touch on is the integration with Service Desk, as well as um, the move of CA STM projects between database. So that's going to be a replacement for the current archive and restore feature. Um, then we're going to move on, and Kevin Lynn is going to give a, a demonstration of the new um, package dependency feature that's um, available in the 12.1. Respect 3 release, and then um, Kevin is going to quickly touch on the uh, Microsoft setup project um, that's available in the, the Visual Studio plugin. Um, I don't think I think there's an eFix available um, or will be available for that. Um, so without further ado, I am going to pass the torch over to Rose um, and let herself and introduce herself, um, kind of give an update on the. the a general product roadmap um, for Harvest. Take it away, Rose. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thanks, Neil. Hi, everyone. I would just like to reiterate the thank you for, for joining that Neil mentioned a couple times. Um, wow, this is, this, is, um, this is wonderful to be a part of the, the software change management uh, software Change Manager community. I am the product manager for CA Endeavor Software Change Manager as well. So I would like to first and foremost apologize up front if you hear me slip Endeavor into the Software Change Manager during during my talk this morning, uh, this afternoon, or this evening, depending upon where you are. So I want to uh, fully disclose that up front. Um, also wanted to mention to you that I am I have quite a bit of experience in the software change management arena. I've been with um, well, CA Technologies for, for two and a half years now as the product manager for Endeavor, but I've been with software change management for probably close to 20 years now, um, dating myself, but um, felt that that was an important point. Anyway, along with me, I just want to quickly mention that um, you know, you have a new product manager, and, and I'm proud to be the product manager. You also have a new product line manager, and that is Bob Pushes, and he's on the call with us today. And um, you'll see his name towards the end of this presentation where I, I talk briefly about the new Agile development methodology that we're utilizing at CA and that we will be using throughout the R12.5 project, which is, which is in progress. So. Bob, if you're on, do you want to say a quick hello? Okay. I guess Bob didn't get through. Okay, let's let's move forward. As Neil mentioned, I have um, a, a really brief roadmap presentation just to give you folks an idea of of what you know where things stand today and and what we're doing with respect to moving forward with with 12.5. So we'll talk about the current release status. Um, uh, a real quick review of the 12.5 release that's in development, and I wanted to mention um, our, our new development partnership that goes along with our Agile Scrum development methodology. So for those of you who do not know, we did change our name to CA Technologies um, probably 
uh, it may be almost two years now or, or a year and a half or so ago um, from from just plain CA. Um, and in addition to the name change, um, you know, we do want to ensure that first and foremost our customers are always at the forefront of our drive for uh, not only improving our technology, but ensuring that all of our technology applies and, and satisfies your business requirements. Okay, let's talk about the release status of Software Change Manager. And I'm really trying to keep the name as Software Change Manager. I know many of you know it as, as Harvest, and perhaps Harvest belongs back in that name, but sure we can have that discussion at another time. So with respect to release 7.1, we had uh, a 7.10 uh, service pack 1 and 2, all of which have ended service uh, August 31st of 2010. So if you're on release 7, you're in the red, and um, I'm hoping that you're looking to upgrade very soon. With respect to release 12, uh, release 12.0, service pack 0, and fix pack 1 um, ended service or is scheduled to end service August 1st of 2012. So you're in the yellow, and um, we don't have an end of service date for 12.0 uh, service pack 2 at this point. Moving on to release 12.1, we have our GA dates listed here. We went GA with the, um, the first release of 12.1 in May of 2010 and sort of were on this six month or so cadence with um, putting out service packs for 12.1 for all the way up and through um, January of this year. So hopefully many of you are on or going, moving towards um, the 12.1 Service Pack 3 release. I've also included in this presentation the release status for the Change Manager Enterprise Workbench. And uh, I'm not sure if any of the folks on the phone also utilize Endeavor and therefore take advantage of the bridge between the mainframe software change management product and um, the harvest or software change manager product, um, which in, 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 um, from my perspective, the enterprise workbench serves as the bridge between the products and also um, serves as the tool to coordinate changes between the distributed world and the mainframe world. Uh, and if you are using the workbench, the current release is R12. That release went GA in August of 2009, and we have not yet finalized the planning for the next release of that product. And I would love to have a conversation with any of you who utilize that product and are looking to um, enhance that product to satisfy some of your business requirements. Okay, I'd like to put this slide up to give you all an idea of how we go about prioritizing your requirements as they come in to product management. As the person responsible for ensuring that you know, the product certainly satisfies your software change management needs, I have to make sure that I, I'm looking at the requests from, you know, and I, as I show here, you know, three different perspectives or categories. And those are, first and foremost, that I, I want to make sure that the product provides the most productivity without necessarily increasing the administration required to, you know, um, put, put features in or, or maintain features or uh, train the end user base. Uh, maintain the product in general from an administrator perspective. Want to make sure that we, we minimize that. We also want to make sure that regardless of what it is that we deliver, that um, we, we continually improve what's already in the product. 
so we look at your enhancement request from that perspective. Maybe there's a feature in there that you really like that's really useful, but it, it could be a little better from, from the end user experience. So we want to continually improve what we're delivering. And regardless of whatever it is that we deliver, it's got to satisfy a business requirement. And we, rec we do recognize that, and we do take that into consideration when we prioritize the requests that come in. Okay, let's talk about R12.5, which is the, um, the project that's currently in development. And the general theme for, you know, uh, both Software Change Manager and Endeavor Software Change Manager is this ongoing plan for integration that, that we have at CA Technologies. Uh, we're recognizing that more and more companies are, are looking for overall solutions as opposed to buying products to satisfy, you know, just, just specific areas of need within, within information technology. And so what I'm showing you here is that, you know, from my perspective, software change management is no longer the, the, the main drive any longer with respect to uh, change in an IT environment. They sort of just become one of the cogs in the overall wheel that I think we all know and understand as application lifecycle management. So the reality is that incidents and requirements and project management are, are the players that drive software change management. And so you'll notice as we move forward, you know, with 12.5 and future releases that we're moving towards recognizing that and facilitating that overall application lifecycle management need. Okay, the initial feature set with, with R12.5 um, consists of a couple of big features and then a bunch of, of user enhancements, which you'll see on a subsequent slide. Um, not going to go into too much detail here. I just wanted to give you a high level of, of, of what's coming. And you'll notice that at the top of the slide, I use the word initial feature set. And I use that specifically because, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're delivering the release utilizing the Agile Scrum methodology. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it, basically that means that, you know, we're, we're working off a, a product backlog that consists of a whole lot of enhancement requests that get prioritized. And as, as we move forward throughout the sprints, which, which are the designated iterations in the Agile Scrum methodology, as we move forward through those sprints, uh, we may find that there are more items that, that we are able to pull from that backlog and, and contribute to this, um, this feature set. So the first one here, SEM Project Maintenance Flexibility. Um, we're, we're basically looking to facilitate the capability to move or copy, as it says, um, move or copy projects between databases. And there are a number of reasons why we're looking to do that, including, you know, the, the reasons you see listed here, you know, to mitigate the growth of the databases, um, take, um, take into account the resource limitations with respect to those databases. Um, sometimes you just want to align with uh, the team reorganizations. Uh, we also want to improve the, the performance scalability, manage offshore development, assist in, in upgrades, and, and finally support um, Oracle SQL Server. So, so those are some of the drivers behind that feature. The next feature addresses the, um, what I'm calling the Software Change Management Integration Foundation at, at CX Tech. Technologies. As I mentioned, you know, the, the general theme here is to facilitate cross-platform or cross-product integrations. And at CA Technologies, we're, we're doing that with something called Catalyst Connectors. And this integration foundation is going to supply the, 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 basic, the basic information that, that's required to to fulfill the catalyst connector requirement, if you will. 
So we're looking at um, an initial integration with service desk management products, or the SDM products, and specifically looking at triggering the creation of a harvest change package during the, the service desk ticketing process, and then automatically updating the service desk workflow and or change order as that package moves its way throughout the life cycle. And then uh, we have a series of certifications here um, that will be included with 12.5. We also have uh, new platform support. We're excited to, to be able to offer um, Harvest Server Workbench and uh, an Eclipse plugin running on Z Linux. Be very interested to hear from any of you that uh, would be able to take advantage of this capability. And we also have a number of enhancements that we're looking at delivering um, that I will not go through, but I wanted to give you a quick peek at some of the items that we are looking at. And finally, I wanted to mention our development partnership. I'm going to call it our development partnership program, although there isn't anything that officially is called development partnership. What this really means is we're, we're looking to have our customers, many of you on the phone, participate in helping us develop the features that you're looking at taking advantage of within Software Change Manager. And you can do that by registering at our customer validation site. And, and anyone who's interested in participating in this program, I have included my email address at the bottom, along with um, our product line manager's email address, Bob Pushes. Um, if you're interested in helping us um, helping us to uh, develop the features that you're interested in. Um, the, the certification program or the validation program really doesn't involve a whole lot of commitment on your part. And I want to make sure that I clearly articulate that this is very different from beta. You know, for, from a beta customer perspective, you know, normally we're looking at you to make a commitment for to the, the product and to testing the features of the new release for, for several weeks. With the validation program, we're really looking for you to give us maybe an hour of your time at the end of our four-week sprints, which is when you know, we finish a development cycle, to either join an, in, into a live meeting to review maybe a prototype. Um, at some point later on in the development, maybe you might receive some alpha code. Um, if, if you have the time to do some testing, we would appreciate that. At some point, it may just be you know, reviewing some of the requirements that we have with respect to features that we're looking to develop. The bottom line here is that we're looking to get you involved earlier in the process so that you have more of a say as to what it is that we're delivering and developing to ensure that we absolutely meet your requirements with respect to an enhancement request. So we're, we're certainly looking for partners for 12.5. Anyone who's interested in, in this program, has any questions, would like to talk to me about it, certainly reach out to me. I'll be glad to have a conversation with you. And uh, certainly look forward to working with you as we go forward. And that's all I have at this point. So we can um, we can certainly open for question and answer at this point before I turn it over to uh, Kevin for for his portion of the uh, user group. At this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment to compile the community roster. So while we're pausing for our questions and answers, this is Bob Pushes, my. Uh line was finally unlocked by the operator, so I just wanted to take a quick uh, hello to everyone, and um, I'm all excited about working with Rose and Kevin on, on this product family. I've been with CA for 16 years now, and um, I own numerous uh, software development projects, and I um, 
I look forward to uh, working with this user community. One of my other product lines has the most active user community inside of CA, and let's see if we can make this one catch up to them and uh, overtake it as the most active community. So um, I think that's enough awards for me, and uh, welcome, welcome, uh, welcome to the, the group, I guess. Or you're all in the group. I'm joining the group, so I'm happy to join. How's that, Rose? Great, Bob. Thanks. And there are no questions at this time. No questions. Okay. I will turn it over to Kevin then. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> let me see. Uh, let me bring my... Hi, again, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Lin. Uh, I guess most of you knew me. I'm the development manager for the software change manager product at the CA. Today, what I'm going to focus to show you is the, the new enhancement, so-called uh, preview or package dependency during the promoting mode process. This is currently available in the CACM uh, uh, out of one zero three, we call it, you can call it SP3 as well, right? Service pack three. As the Rose uh, show you all the timeline, again, uh, you can recap that this is what happened for the last three years and the, for the part of release, right? For the latest one, it just uh, released on the early of this year. There are two uh, key features delivered in the SP3, right? Include the include, uh, integration with the CA Vision Suite for the requirement management support and the agile development support. Right? With the integration uh, between the CM and H CA Vision, it allows you to integration with the CA Clarity to pair up with the uh, project portfolio management as well. Right? We, we did this presentation on the whole integration in the last uh, webcast. Uh, you can refer to the old recording to review it. If you, you didn't get a chance to, to see it, uh, actually, actually it's pretty uh, rich, uh, uh, attempted in, in terms of integration wise. Okay. So today, what, what I'm going to show you is another, uh, let me go to the next slide, <clears throat> another key feature, um, preview of package dependency, right? Uh, before the, the SP3, and when you do the promote or demo package, right, we, we give you an optional feature called view, verify package dependency that allow you to uh, the enforce the dependent package uh, in the same state to move, move the package together. But that feature is, is kind of limited uh, because in the more, a uh, little bit more complicated case, if you, if you have a package one depend on two and depend on three, uh, it won't pick up the the next level. It only pick up the one and two and not pick up the three, right? So you have to, based on the elements, and continue to pick up the next one and put it together, right? Uh, especially when you have a dependency package on different A and view, then that will be take more time to analyze that. So we did receive uh Actually, quite a customer request that, you know, I just listing out some of the number and some description there. I think that was from the Sugi uh, user group uh, request that. Uh, but we do have uh, some other customer requests that as well. So, so this uh, new feature will be available to you on the SP3. So you, you can, um, you can see the, the package dependency, uh, not only the package itself, We'll also show you what are the associated versions. And then, then with that feature, you, you can automatically add, say, hey, I want to have all the dependent package in the promote demo. And then, uh, you don't need to manually select that. We already pick up for you. And this function also, uh, in terms of implementation wise, you can do it from the workbench, from Eclipse parking, from the Visual Studio parking, as well as command line. So we give you the full support of this process uh, the, for the embedded in the promo and demo. All right, let's go to the next. Uh, what I'm going to show you is from the uh, using the use case. Two use cases, uh, I'll go over that. 
Okay? So for the use case one, take a look at this case, right? Package A has a uh, checking a, a initial version called version zero for the file X. Okay? Package B, you know, check it out and check it in back with the package B, right? So that's second changes. Package C is create a, the version. So the, in this version tree, you have a version zero tag with package A, version one tag with package B, version C tag with version uh, two, right? And I'm sorry, so version two tag with package C. And then the, you can see the dependency information is, is actually when I try to promote package C from a development state to test day, right? What the, what the picture there show you is that it's very simple. Uh, life cycle, right, development to test to release, right? It's a release, a very simple uh, release model. That's a template available for you to create a project, right? So so when you promote the, the C, uh, if you don't have that function, actually you're going to see the message say, hey, you have detected version dependency, uh, one package called package B in the state, in the state of the development. So you couldn't promote. Right, so you have to basically including all the package. So, so let me give you some screenshot. What I pick it up, uh, show you that is that okay. After that, the uh, in Unit Promote, you have a new tab called Dependent Package. Allow you to click on that. You can see oh, okay, what are all of my dependency? Okay, and also it show when you try to promote package C, it show you package A and B, right? And then you click on the package A, it shows you all oh, what's the what's the version of social package A copies dependency because they all based on the file X, right? So you can it show you to say, hey, the version zero of file X associated with package A has dependency, you have to move them together, right? In the lower part of a screenshot called package B, and then you can see that you know it has a version one. So that's 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 very. Uh, this is a quite straightforward uh, use case. All right. Let's take a look. Second use case. Uh, I, I kind of add some complexity now. Okay. You know, if you look at the graphics thing, is that same same life cycle, right? From development from, to the test to the release, right? But in the development, you you have a two package package A, package C in the test A. With a test view, right? Working view, you have a package B, package D. But then they also, also they are simultaneous update on the three file, right? File X, file Y, file Z. So because update the sequence different, right? so package A has association version version one of a file X. Package C has file X, Y with a different version two and one, right? Package B. Z and Y with the version one and two. That D is uh, the file X and Z version three and two. So that gives you some kind of a uh, possible combination what you need to deal with. So in this case, what happened when you try to promote a package D? So you will find out dependency because D has a change on the file X and Z, right? And X, well, file Z will cause the dependency on the B, right? And then in the B, it will cause dependency on the package C in the development state. And then D also have a dependency on the files, the package C and package A in the development state. All right? So, so when you promote the package D, definitely it's not going to be uh, uh, okay because you haven't choose the other pack dependent package. So, so this is what does that look like? Okay. So again, you click on a dependent package that actually lets you preview, right, to see it. Okay, the package A, you have a dependency of a file X version 1, right? Package B, you have a dependency of file Z, right? But then the other side of the uh, dialog, actually this is, a, this is a kind of a proposed by my American family. Okay, let's show you other uh, ver associate version which not in this dependency, but actually it will cause the other dependency, right? So that's file, B, file Y, version 2, right? And then if you click on the package C, again, because they have more than one changes, 
X, file X is a key dependency to the, the packet D. But Y has the, another subsequent dependency with the uh, packet B. All right, so, so these are the sort of a, a three level deep of the packet dependency uh, uh, use case. And I put the, the default is all, and then you'll get the full support to get all the information that will make the uh, promotion much, much easier compared to before, right? So I think this definitely is a very useful feature what you can have. So again, I'm showing you next slide is that when you add the, there's a button, right? You can add all the dependent to the promote list or demand list. So it automatically add those B and C over. But, but you look at the column number state, actually it's a different column. So, so when you do the promote, you still need to move the, the, because you are on the test state to this, uh, to the release state, and then you still need to promote A and C over, then you can promote all of them together. So this is the, uh, the process what you need, end up need to do. I will, I'll kind of show you in the demo. Okay? And then let me conclude this, uh, this presentation, and I'll show you that, okay, for the command line wise, okay, the yeah, new option editing, right? So the new option uh, for the H HPP, HTTP uh, command line, right? So you, you have a new option, dash PDR, that's a new option to this dependent package. Dash VDR, new option to list the version associated with. As long as you have those two uh, flags turned on, uh, the promote demo won't, won't be executed because this is a kind of a uh, in the preview mode. All right, so you can see that you can get a result. And again, you can have a, a option dash ADP, okay, to to add all the dependent package. So you you can always that that dash ADP without even preview. That's another option you can go. The only thing is that just that you have a package in a different state, you end up still need to go back to see. But you have the visibility to see what you need to change. Okay, change to the promote. Okay. So far, so good, I hope. Then I'm going to uh, do the demo for you, and then you can uh, ask me the question. Okay, just give me one second. Uh, okay. Hey, Neil, let me know. Can you see it? Yep, we can see it. Okay. All right. In, this is what you're familiar with Workbench, right? And in the Workbench, I create two demo projects. The demo one is the use case one. So in the develop stay, I have a three package. Okay? The each package, you know, is exactly the same setup in my presentation. So package B, package C, right? Right? Then you can see the, the kind of a, you know, history wrong. You can see that, right? So, like, <laughs> my hand just not. Uh, can you guys see clearly? Zero, one, two, right? Package A, B, C, right? So, so what, what this is the kind of history diagram. You can see that. So let's see. I promote package, uh, let me see, uh, I click on wrong, okay, promote to test, right? Okay, what happened if I don't do anything, I say, okay, right? This is what you have before, right? Right, if you look at the log here, the tag version dependency, B, but he only tell you the B here, okay? Right? So, if I say what happened, dependent package, it show you A and B, right? And then we say, okay, why A and B? Okay, well, let's take a look what's the associate version there. Okay? You click on the show version detail. And you say, click on the A. Hey, it show you, okay, the version detail. Right? And click on the B, it show you the version 1. Right? If I say add all of the 
for more to the, I mean, all the package to the list, so ABC will show up, right? Well, then we say, okay, go ahead to promote, right? So then will be success. Everything will be in the testing mode now. I'm, I'm sorry, testing state. Okay, so that's how the new behavior looks like. So that's a demo one. This is a simple case, but useful, right? So, okay, in the demo two, as I show you, right, A and C on the debug state, right? So many click. So, okay, test. Right, so well, you can see that too. So you can see, okay, give me a hit of that one. You know, right? Get different day, I can show all of the seven. Okay, this one is one in turn three, right? So let me go back. Okay, now let's do this. Uh, put more to the release, right? From test to release, guess what? See, see what happened, right? Uh, you know, even I say we better pack this all all the uh, function, right? So you're gonna get L, right? You're gonna get L, but he only tell you that's B, right? So okay, if you look at the elements here, right? And then if you go go ahead and say, hey, I'm gonna basically see what's going on here. Okay, I do have an A, B, C, but A and C are different state now. I, I'm on the test state, but then he actually told tell me, you know, there are some other dependency in the other state. Wow. Okay, then say let's take a look what's going on for the back day. What what's the dependency associated with? Oh, that's the version one of our X. How about C? Okay, actually that related to the file X version two, right? C also have other dependency because. The, the file A is also associated with B. I mean, I see C, right? And you look at the B, that has a file Z, and version 1, and the file Y. So you can say, hey, I want to add all of them together. But guess what? He's going to give you a warning. He say, wait a minute. There's one more package in a different state. You please promote them all them manually. So these are the one we, we are not able to automate everything for you because you could have so many other uh, complexity you have to deal with because some link UDP or whatever other things. So we don't obviously just promote for you on that. But that part you have to uh, push from a uh, from development to test first. Then you can promote everything over. Okay. So that is the new behavior. I think that uh, allow you to have a uh, much more easy way to deal with the package dependency. Okay. So at the end of the demo, let's go back. Uh, to have the Q&A section. Okay, operator, we can open up a question. At this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Any question about the this new feature? There are no questions at this time. Kevin, um, this is Neil. I assume that the additional command line parameters for the Harvest Promote and Demote package are they're all optional. Yes, that's all optional. Okay, cool. It just make you make your life easier for you know for whoever need to deal with the automation. So right, so. We can actually with the user from the from the from the dead body, uh I mean family for the from the ceremony, they did provide very, very valuable input. So we end up uh, deliver the way, you know, with more rich in content from the compared to the or, original car, so So this was the result of a client's Participation in the dev body that this yeah yeah I actually both American family and the family participate yeah, and then give us more um, and kind of better input for this feature so 
I guess for everyone out there, this is a real life plug of you know the DevBuddy results and you know the the ability to work with CA and have them implement um, you know a set of functionality that is really driven by um, the users. Um, so I, I again stress the participation if you have time on the, on that program. Uh, I think it's extremely valuable. Yeah, that's Right, so that's uh, one more note. That that's that's the uh, the the one program that's been that's been mentioned by Rose, right? She just talked about that. Hey, Rose, you want to add more commentary how they can register this program? So. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And I just I just want to clarify. You know, the development buddy program was was in place prior to the switch over to the agile Scrum development methodology, and I think that program. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that program required more of a commitment than what we're asking for in, in the um, customer validation uh, registration. And again, I just want to reiterate that at, you know, as a customer participant in, in the, um, the project, in the sprints for our, our newest release, we're really just asking you know, to share some of the requirements with you, to share you know, what, where we think we're, we're, how we're going to design them, how we plan on in implementing them, and we, we give you an opportunity to offer input throughout the development cycle. So it's really a, a minimum requirement for a maximum return, in my opinion. Yeah, for the coming 12.5, you know, there's exciting uh, the feature that move copy project between different database. I think is that that's we you're welcome to join because that one is really really uh, going to create a very valuable uh, uh, value for your usage right now. So you know, you're welcome to participate in that and that give us more input. You know. Okay, so so uh, if no further question about in this feature, and I will touch a little bit about the uh, Visual Studio uh, plugin uh, support of the setup project. I mean, we did find out the use for those people need to use the uh, project type, so-called setup project in the Visual Studio plugin, and you definitely will experience some issues there because we find out. Uh, whatever the, the visit based uh, parking uh, API what we use uh, is not uh, what uh, is not uh, the Microsoft didn't really return us the the value what we expect to have so we end up need to alter the the API to work around the current um, uh, challenge right now so we did receive about three customers who use this uh, so-called setup project. And this is for the, you know, when you try to deploy the, the Microsoft, you know, Visual Studio uh, base application, install the project, you know, template, right? So, I mean, this is kind of allow you to, to deal with that, that set up, kind of as the deliver that uh, uh, application based on that schema. I think, uh, you know, what I found out information is that Microsoft actually going to uh, expire the support with the Visual Studio 2010. I, I don't know what the replacement that will like, but sounds like uh, eventually they're going to get out of support at this kind of type of the project. And then again, what happened is that uh, Microsoft actually end up support so many project types in the Visual Studio. And uh, for us, because we don't really know uh, all kinds of uh, usage out there, and then the, the testing coverage won't cover all the different combination of use cases, so so you, we may miss some of the of the function when you migrate from the old SEC base integration to the VCIP integration base. So this is what happened. And then uh, uh, please go ahead to, to report to our uh, you know support group, and we'll work with you case by case to, to identify what exact use case you actually experience the problem, and then we'll take it out and then. Uh, uh, we'll kind of correct that. Because we found out it's the same pattern, you know, if you go to the subversion or go to other vendors, uh, uh integration, it's same failure. I mean, unless, uh, we need to change the code to make it happen. So this happened, 
uh, to your user. So uh, if you do have that kind of an issue, please go ahead and report our um, support line, and then we'll kind of uh, provide the, the, the correction there or provide a change there. So, so Neil, update to you regarding this uh, deliver setup project. Right now, can we find a more test case comes in, or use case comes in, so the the verification will be extended even cover more use cases. So the current uh, target is uh, is about the late July. All right. Okay. Thanks, and if you have, uh, if you guys want to get involved, um, verify with us, and you're welcome. Let us know. We'll, we'll kind of provide you the. Uh, testing fix as well, so. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else has the, any usage questions? Or comments? Otherwise, I will turn over to Neil. So, exit question, Thank please you. press star one on your telephone keypad. Hey, Neil, I just wanted to mention that I'm um, looking at the Q&A board uh, in the live meeting, and um, Robert had, had um, submitted a, an FYI that uh, his company actually uses the Enterprise Workbench to maintain code and keep it in sync between uh, Harvest and Endeavor for code moves. So, so Robert, thank you for that information. Does anybody else have any questions? And there are no questions at this time. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining today. Um, our next webcast, um, I believe, is in September sometime. Um, and we'd really like to um, get other members of the community involved in these meetings, um, whether it be showing a certain integration that you have or some sort of uh, scripting or automation that you have behind the scenes um, that works with CASCM, um, you know, Everybody, I'm sure, would, would love to see that, um, you know, something that makes your shop unique um, and sets you apart from everyone else. Um, if you'd be willing to share that, um, please contact myself, Kevin, or Rose, um, and we can get you lined up um, with a half hour during our next quarterly meeting to uh, do a little presentation. Um, again, you can always um, contact us through the, the CA, myca.com. Um, if anybody, <clears throat> again, has any uh, requests or would like to see something on a future webcast, um, please also let us know that um, and we can uh, see what we can do to accommodate you. Uh, if there's no other questions, I think we can uh, go ahead and uh, call it a day. Everyone will get back to about a half hour to their day. Um, thank you everyone for participating and we hope to uh, talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. This concludes today's conference call. You may now disconnect. <laughs>